So section 2.2 .2 is all about logic proofs. Now we aren't going to be using truth tables anymore. Okay? So I told you in the last section we proved modus ponens and modus tollens. Those are two uh, rules of inference, but there are actually nine. So hypothetical syllogism says that if P and Q implies Q is true and Q implies R is true, then P implies R. Disjunctive syllogism is true. It tells us that if I have P or Q and not P, then I've got Q. If I have P implies Q for constructor dilemma, if I have P implies Q and R implies S, and I've got P or R is true, then Q or S is true. Um, for destructive dilemma, if I have P implies Q and R implies S, and I have not Q or not S is true, then not P or not R is true as well. So there's the first six. The final three are really useful as well. So simplification says if I have P and Q is true, um, then P is true. And that one should make a little bit um, of sense, right? Because if I have P and Q are true, they're only true if they're both true. So I can take one away and still have um, that P is true. Conjunction says if I have two truth values and I add them together, that's going to be true. And addition says if I have a true value and I add anything, it, because it's or, right, I could add a true or a false, P or Q will be true. So we're going to practice using these rules of inference for logical proofs. So here they are written out um, uh, I've written out the definitions, um, but I'm going to let you read over these because we need to practice proving these. So one thing I'm going to do is here I have a proof all written up and I want us to um, label the uh, steps of this proof. So in bold are my givens. If I have y implies x and not z, and x or z implies w, and I have y is true, therefore w. Okay, so the first thing I have is y implies x and not z. I also have y. Okay, look at your um, text page 68 it has all these rules written out so you can see that this is kind of like modus ponens i have p implies q right i've got y implies something and i've got p therefore q so i'm going to write one comma three because i used rows one and three we need to make sure we use all of our givens but i used rows one and three and then i use modus ponens now, the text to shorten it to MP, I like writing out the whole thing, so <laughs> I'm going to do that. Then I have X and not Z. So if we look at our rules, right, if we go to rule 7, simplification, if I have P and Q, I can simplify that to just P. So that's how I got from row 4 to 5. So I took row 4 and I um, simplified it. Next, right under simplification, uh, actually nine, is addition. Okay, so you're kind of being a sleuth and trying to figure out like what step did they use to get where they're going. So I have X or Z. That's an example of addition on row five, but I still haven't used row two. So we're going to have to use row two now for this final step. So if I have P implies Q and P right, this is modus ponens again, I get W. So this was rows two and six modus ponens, okay? So those are our steps. And I'm gonna go through some examples where the steps aren't written out for us and we can figure them out ourselves. 
So I did go ahead and type up every step. That way you guys could see it and check your answers. Um, next, I'm gonna write a formal logic proof. If I'm given that j m pi is p and k or j and not l, and I'm given not k, I'm gonna somehow prove that all of that gives us p. So I go ahead and I write down all of my givens. Okay, so what am I gonna do? Well, I've got J implies P, I've got K or J and not L, and I've got not K. Well, the one thing I can see I can do if I look at my rules, I see rule uh, nine, I can go ahead, sorry, rule seven, I can go ahead and simplify step two. So that'd give me K or J, and that was a row two, simplification. Now I have K or J and I have a not K. Okay. If I have K or J and not K, that looks a lot like disjunctive syllogism. The switch says if I have Disjunctive syllogism says if I have P or Q and not P, therefore Q. So this lets me get a J all by itself using uh, in rows four and three, disjunctive syllogism. Okay, so now we always one thing I want to say is we always want to keep in mind what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove P. Well, I knew when I started this problem that in order to get P by itself, I'd have to get J because then I could use modus ponens because P implies Q and if I'm given P, therefore Q, right? So kind of think about what your end goal is and how to get there and then look over the steps. I know this can be a little overwhelming. When I first started doing these problems, I felt the exact same way and I didn't feel really, really good about them until I did all of the homework problems. So I know problem two looks kind of like a beast, especially problem three, but if you do them in order, it'll build your skills up. That's one of my recommendations. So now that I have J all by itself, final step, I'm using rows one and five and modus ponens. to isolate my P, which was my goal. Hooray. All right, let's write another formal logic proof. So I have A implies B. A and C. And B implies D. And I'm trying to get D all by itself. Okay, so where is my only D in this problem? It's right here. I have B implies D. So I can kind of figure, okay, I need to try and get B by itself. I need to get B by itself because then I could use modus ponens. So my first step, I've got A and C. I'm going to simplify that to just A because that's the only move I can make right now. Next, I have A. And I have A implies B, so I can use modus ponens to just get B. Lastly, I've got six, okay? I have um, B and I have B implies D, so I can use modus ponens again on rows three and five in order to get D all by itself, okay? So why don't we go ahead and take a look at what I assigned for the homework. So here's our section 2.2 homework. I want to do numbers one, two, and three. I know that seems like quite a bit, 
but it would be really helpful in your ability to gain the skills to work through these logic proofs. I recommend do the homework in order. Do the homework in order. Start with problem one, two, three, and do problem A before you do problem C. Why? Because it's working to help you build those skills. Okay, I want you to note that sometimes you might do some extra steps that you didn't help you solve the problem, and that's okay. As long as you follow the necessary rules, um, you are doing just fine. Heads up, for any of the problems, I wanted to give you guys like a cap. You shouldn't have more than 12 necessary steps for any problems. If you get like more than that, maybe send me a question on what problem you're working on or where you're stuck and I can try and help. Next, one thing I want you to do is like look where you're trying to prove, right? What rule of inference would get you there? If I have a whole bunch of stuff and then I have C implies D and I'm trying to prove D, well, I better try and find C so I can use modus ponens. The same is true for all of the other rules. So take a quick look at that. Um, and if you have any questions, please be in touch.